you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. I hope you're having an awesome day. So you're probably wondering where am I? Who's the gentleman standing right next to me? Well, this is Mark. How are you doing, Mark? Hello. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Mark is the owner of Shark Tinderbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very known British company that sells, uh, you know, flint and seals, traditional fire making materials, and a lot of handicrafts. Uh, they're very well known for their reputation for just producing some amazing, amazing products. Now, where I'm at the moment is at the May Day Gathering, which is organised by the Bushcraft Magazine. Now, if you haven't already seen so, I put out a video uh, before this, um, which was like a video diary. So, what I'll do um, on this screen right now, I'll just put a little box somewhere showing you uh, a link to that video if you want to go ahead and watch it. And it's basically just a gathering in the southeast part of the United Kingdom uh, with people in the bushcraft community and all aspects of it. Um, and Mark is one of those gentlemen. I've actually been following what these guys have been doing um, on Facebook, and obviously, fortunate to meet them here. Now, we're going to discuss a couple of things. First, we're going to obviously just talk to Mark, find out more about what they do. But more importantly, what I'm really going to focus on this particular video here is I'm actually going to buy my first Flint and Steel set. Um, and I actually waited to buy this in person from, from Mark and Sharp Tinderbox um, as opposed to buying it online because I really want to look and feel. And more importantly, I want to know basically what I'm buying and how to use it. So I thought to myself, um, yeah, Mark, Mark is obviously an expert in what he does. So I thought it'll be beneficial, perhaps, that you know, as I'm buying it, when I'm learning, because I'm learning literally in this video, what's what you know the do's and do nots, um, to hopefully share it with you. So hopefully, you know, for those of you who are like me, new or kind of intermediate or even some of the advanced, um, pick up a thing or two. You know, every day you've got to be learning. Um, so what better than yeah. to sit down with an expert? Um, so Mark, thank you once again. Take it out. Take it out a bit of time. I know it's a very busy day for you here. Um, do you want to first of all tell the guys what what is it you do? What Sharp Tin Box is about? Yeah, well, Shark Tinderbox is uh, a company I set up about seven or eight years ago uh, to deal with fire lighting, knife sharpening, and leather craft, leather work that we, we kind of specialise in. Um, my particular interest is is uh, fire steels uh, throughout history uh, and uh, generating fires from sparks. So that's basically where we are. So you're basically a pirate, a pirate I'm a pyromaniac. <laughs> basically just like making a start of starting fires and uh, this is just the business it built around that passion. Well what we'll do, uh, Mark, if you're okay with you, um, I'll actually jump behind the camera. It'll be easier because what Mark is kind of going to do is talk, talk us through uh, some of the kind of principles. So give us a second and let's do that. Okay, Mark. So coming back to flint and steel, um, I mean, I want to start from the absolute basic. Um, what do you define as a flint and steel? Right. Well, flint and steel. The, the idea of sparks for creating fire. Uh, there's a lot of uh, evidence to suggest it actually predates rubbing the sticks together. So, going back millions of years, these nodules are made, and usually where you find flint you'll find chalk and where you find flint chalk you will often find these nodules you often find them on beaches and it's iron pyrite and iron pyrite um, with uh, traditional pieces of flint and these these pieces were napped by my good friend Will Lord um, when they're struck together they will create very, very, very dull sparks and you can't see these sparks during the day. You have to do it at night if you really want to see it. But what would happen is they would have a, um, a piece of tinder fungus and this, this is um, the horse's hoof fungus. And with the horse's hoof fungus you've got like the pores and you can see these little lines. There's the pores. And this brown layer here is called the trammel layer and it's the trammel layer that catches sparks so on the outside you've got this very very tough cuticle layer and what they would do is they would take their piece of flint and they would cut that away to get to the trammel layer and then they would start fluffing it up and, and this, this when it's all fluffed up and a nice big pile of it takes a spark particularly well from um, um, iron pyrite. Now this is a, a, a technique that's been used for hundreds of thousands of years. Okay, So say a couple of thousand years ago someone discovered that um, you could create metal and they very very quickly learnt 
that metal created a, a bigger spark and a hotter spark so it would catch light to more variety of tinders <coughs> so with flint and steel the steel has to be very very hard so you can't use mild steel it has to be high carbon steel and when they heat it they heat it to cherry red and then they can quench it in water or oil and it, it makes a little crystalline structure but it also makes it incredibly brittle so this is an example of a, a fire steel that was dropped and it snapped so it happens okay but it has to be very hard for it to work so generally speaking if you get a fire steel and you can't strike a spark from it it's because it's not hard enough okay so here we've got a variety of fire steels and the shapes that have been used throughout history are absolute anything you can imagine people have made these the, these uh, into shapes and these are examples of very large fire steel by, made by a good friend of ours called Andrew Kirkham and uh, I especially had these commissioned for, for the shows they're incredibly beautiful and they re work really really well super sparks come from them <clears throat> but you need a little bit of practice to, to create sparks from this because you have to get your technique pretty pretty accurate so it's not like the modern ferrocerium rods this this goes back 2000 year old technology and what you're really after is a good piece of flint that's got a nice edge on it some really nice sharp edges and you're trying to hold the flint at about a 45 degree angle so that when the striker the steel strikes it it knocks a chip chip off and with the speed that you're going at that chip will start to burn and it will create sparks so these are the sort of sparks you get now you can see them in this this kind of light now what you're trying to do there is collect the sparks so like I said with the Amadou the, the trameleur in here that was can be processed uh, through boiling uh, it's quite hard work it's quite I've written a few articles on it and the local magazine is the bushcraft magazine about how you do that but once it's been processed it you end up with this really rather beautiful almost chamois leather like material and that catches a spark particularly well so my, my favorite technique there's, there's several techniques you can use to catch fire, uh, catch a spark. Uh, my favourite is to actually put it on the flint itself and then strike down. Um, and there, there's a spark, uh, it's already caught an ember. That's how fast it can, can go. Now, Amadou is, is a natural plant material and is it very, very, very hot. So, when I'm demonstrating, I can't put that out with my, my fingers and my fingers are usually quite tough because it actually is too hot so I have to put it out with the steel and what do you do to put it out? Just press it down? Just it? press it down, all you're trying to do is get rid of the uh, air okay. okay. the steel will also wick away the heat okay. right. so it, it, it's not the easiest material to use mm -hmm. but a little bit of practice you get it with one or two strikes the, a much easier material is char cloth and char cloth is any kind of plant material like linen or cotton uh, that has been burned in the absence of air okay so you can you can get an old tobacco tin and put your cloth in there close the lid punch a little hole in it and stick it on a fire and it, it will burn the char cloth it will burn the cotton inside and a lot of smoke will come out and then smoke will get left and then it'll catch light and then the flame will get smaller and smaller and then it'll just go out with a puff you take it off the fire then and put a little stick in the hole so it stops the air getting in mm -hmm. and when it's cold you will end up with char cloth a char cloth is um, 
a, a fantastic way of catching a spark. It's incredibly easy to use, much easier than the Amadou. And again, my favourite technique actually is holding it on the uh, the flint about about five mil, two, three, five mil, something. It's it's not incredibly accurate how far it is, but you know a spark will hit it. So again, lining up one strike there, got two two sparks hit at two different places. So now you've got an ember. So the uh, the trick now is to turn this ember into a flame. So back in time. 2,000 years ago, someone came up with this really rather novel idea of using a sulphur match to do that. And really it's just a wooden spill that has been dipped in sulphur. So when you touch it, the sulphur uh, will ignite um, a sulphur match to the ember and sulphur burns at a very low temperature. So if the hasn't gone out, There you go, it's caught light. Doesn't usually work in the outdoors because of the wind that blows. But now you have a direct flame, and that flame can now be used to light your candles or light your, your stove, uh, your wooden. So that's that's technique for creating a, a direct flame. It smells a bit, you don't want to breathe in the fumes because it's uh, sulfur dioxide. Mm -hmm. That's not terribly good for the lungs. Um, right, so there's that technique, and all of these fire steels work in the same way. They're all, everyone will work in the same way. This is another Andrew Kirkham one, which is be absolutely beautiful. Um, it's big and it's clumsy, but with the right technique, you can get a whole bunch of sparks from it. Uh, these are traditional shaped ones. Have a, oh, cool, cool, look there, see? A spurt from up here, the spark jumped down there and caught onto the, and that hurts because it's so hot. But uh, it just jumps down there and catches. But, um, these, are, these are all different traditional shapes um, for fire steels. Um, th this is very traditional. Uh, <laughs> this is the Egyptian hieroglyphics. Well, that's Egyptian <laughs> shark hieroglyphics. Uh, <laughs> plug. Uh, this one's um, a traditional Viking teardrop shape as well. I mean, again, they all work with the same same idea, and and you're just scraping sparks from them. Um, this this particular one um, I designed. It, it does two jobs. Um, one, it can be used as a traditional flint and steel, so with a bit of char cloth on there. Um, again, it can be used to catch an ember very easily for traditional flint and steel fire lighting. Or now, we, what we do now is we can come forward 2,000 years to about 100 years ago, and there was a German scientist, uh, his name escapes me at the moment. And he started creating what's called ferrocerium. And um, ferrocerium cerium was meant to be a rare earth me metal. In fact, it's. Uh, I believe it's the second most common metal on the earth's mantle. Um, so it's like aluminium. Uh, there's abundance of it. Um, uh, basically, it does exactly the same job as the, the pyrite which is very dull, you can't see those. Uh, uh, the flint and steel is the next process, uh, next stage in the technology of spark-based fire lighting. And then ferrocerium in it, all its forms. The ferrocerium is, uh, you know, the little big lighters that you've got that mm -hmm. strike um, these little gas lighters. Well, the, the little wheel here is, is going to rub against a piece of ferrocerium which is in there so that's, oh, I didn't know that. that, that's how they make it. Oh interesting. So ferrocerium you'll see creates masses and masses of sparks. When 
stop that. So there you go, look at that man. <laughs> the power of Mark's voice, just stop that phone. Okay, it's a Ferrocerium Pre-8. Uh, again, this 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 particular tool, this, this edge here is for flip, for, uh, traditional flint uh -huh. steel. Okay, Whereas this this edge along here, all the way around, and on both sides, it is very hard and, and, and 90 degrees very sharp. So you can't cut yourself, mm -hmm. but it is the very strong 90 degree cutting edge, and it just scrapes this stuff off beautifully. So you can imagine again, you have your your uh, piece of amadou resting on the side and you simply strike and there is a nice big ember ready to light the fire with one shape or another. Very cool. So modern ferrocerium, lots of sparks, very hot high temperature, I think we live about three and a half thousand degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. The the uh, fi uh, traditional fire steels, there's again is um, burning steels, it's about 800 degrees centigrade, I think, I think, I don't quote me on it. Uh, and, and then the uh, pyrite, and that, that temperature comes right down. <coughs> and I don't even know the temperature of that. Um, so really that's, that's, um, that's what we can say with what we're after. Um, now as to making a little kit up, what would you go for? Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. I was about to say go. With, when you're a beginner, um, this particular fire steel was sent back to us from a, a chap who bought it from us and he said it didn't work. So what I promptly did was got my son who was six at the time and there's a bit of YouTube footage on my website of him lighting mm -hmm. the fire. He was six at the time and he used this and a piece of flint because flint works particularly well as well to create lovely sparks. Anything hard and sharp, glass will work, but if you're a child I wouldn't recommend the glass. Um, anyway, I gave my son, six at the time, uh, a piece of, I gave him this, and a piece of uh, the very dull that had been used a lot. Because uh, what happens is, if you look along the edge, it chips, and, and as it chips, it becomes duller and duller. Okay, so um, anyway, he got a flame going in 1 minute 23 seconds using this technique. So and you can imagine, if you're using, the this is a, like a drop spark technique, where you're pushing sparks onto, um, say, a piece of tinder like this, and you can push a spark into it and there's there's an ember in there and that will glow up. There's the ember. Uh, th there's that, like dropping a spark in. Or you can, which uses a lot of ferrocerium. Or you can use this technique. Again, being a, a Yorkshireman, I like things to, uh, to last longer than they, they should. And again, you're just striking. So you use very little ferrocerium, but you still get your ember. Wow. So that's a that's a nice technique. Um, again, that's easy to put out because it's char cloth. Um, yeah. Uh, so now, so so in terms of the kind of core basics of a flint and steel kit, you're mm -hmm. talking obviously a piece of flint, a steel. Yeah. Then. Right, there's, there's two types of, you know, you can, you can buy traditional. This particular piece of kit is based upon um, Hudson Bay Trading Company, Canada, mm -hmm. um, from the, you know, from the 1700s. And it's a complete tinder box. So you have your piece of char cloth and uh, a piece of jute uh, that can be used to create a flame from the ember uh, that you put in there. Uh, uh, we, we have extra pieces of jute that can be fluffed up to create a little tinder bundle like that. Mm -hmm. uh, bits of amadou in it and 
uh, various, this is a traditional sort of shaped uh, Hudson Bay oval um, and then your bits of flint and things like that. It, it becomes what I like and I love, love about things like this, it becomes used and, and it's had a journey. It's, 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 for me this is beautiful, you know, if it's polished it's it's too clean and it's, it's hmm. nice, you know, so this has got a lovely patina to it. Um, the Hudson Bay is an example, also comes with a, um, a six times magnification lens for solar fire lighting. So if you can imagine you're out in the outbacks of uh, uh, Canada or America and the best flint in the world comes from England. Uh, this is this is beautiful flint and a lot of the flint that you get in the rest of the world is not so good so flint was a very precious resource your flint and steel very precious resource in the wild uh, so if the sun is shining like it is today you would light your fire with the the lens rather than using your resources up um, that's still going so a, a really nice little tinder box that we do is the Hudson Bay. Uh, we do these in uh, varying forms of metal. Um, this is brass. Um, we also do one of them in copper. Again, the patina that you'll start getting from these things is absolutely amazing. Uh, we do some in German silver. This is uh, Helen's tinder box, so it's different from mine. We're all different people. We like to keep different things in. Mm -hmm. She's got some sulfur matches in there as well. Uh, Helen's your partner? Helen's my wife, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so she, she's getting really good at this, actually. Getting a little bit jealous of her skills. <laughs> um, again, th this one, we, we have a little pouch that we make for it, which is can be kept, kept on your belt. Mm -hmm. um, to keep with, with you all the time. Uh, other varieties, you have soft pouches. Um, again, this is a soft pouch, tinderbox pouch that we, we do, and you can put modern ferrocerium uh, fire. Pouches, again, they, these are just wrapped around and then they're, they're, they're tucked in and put in your pocket or your backpack or wherever you want to put it. And again, this is a very traditional, firebox and again this is Helen's one so I don't know so I feel a bit rude actually going through going through a purse <laughs> so again she's got her pieces of flint um, this this fire steel was made by uh, a, a lovely chap in America called Randy from Bethel Forge amazing blacksmith amazing and this one again this fire is a gate that's an Andrew Kirkham um, that, that these are very popular at uh, Valentine's for yeah, giving to the S setting fire to your partner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, the passion of a, a million, million years of development. <laughs> so the, the, these are again different ones. Um, they spark really well. Lots of lovely sparks come on uh, from them. And so it's all about what are you after. Gotcha. So. You've got a pouch sort of fire, fire. Some people like pouches. Mm -hmm. Some people like tinder boxes. If we're going to go back um, and you want to create your own, what we sort of recommend you do is go for um, a tin, some tobacco tin, or, or something like that. So it's kind of like make it your own. Kind this of thing, is a okay. make your own kit up. So like this would be a tobacco tin. Um, uh, we've got other tins here. Uh, I think these are Tiffin tins, aren't they? For, yes. Yep. Yep. Fantastic stainless steel, never rust. Brilliant shape. Lovely strong steel. This one is a tobacco tin. Again, you, you people use Altoid tins and things like that. Yep. Um, and basically what you do then is, when you, when if you buy from us, we always give, give people free flint anyway, because it's... So, you get your flint, you choose your fire steel, 
um, if you're going for traditional flint and steel there's all sorts of different shapes that you can be looking at um, fire stills and uh, some are made by Bethel Forge and uh, they're very rustic in shape and feel but they work fantastic and this is a really professional blacksmith who makes these um, so you've got some custom uh, yeah custom design shape these these again um, are made by Andrew Kirkham that he's another fantastic blacksmith um, amazing products that they, they both make fantastic shapes and beautiful shapes as well yeah so th there's all sorts of shapes and you choose your shape and what whatever's really um, suits you best and th then again so what you're really after is a piece of flint a fire steel of some description some perhaps some amadou uh, or some ch char cloth definitely some char cloth and then uh, basically that's your fire set okay so then and then from there you expand you yeah customize it you, you could put you could put sulfur matches with them um, uh, you can use all sorts of different uh, plant materials like, this is um, so, so mugwort. Not, so it's not a bag of weed, no? No, well, it smells like <laughs> a bag of weed. This used to be called poor man's tobacco. Okay. Because they did used to smoke it. Oh, wow, okay. And it does smell a little bit like um, some illegal yeah, yeah. substances yeah. that you can... Stuff we, we know nothing about. No, I know nothing about it. No. I'm a good boy. Um, uh, again, pieces of amadou. Um, People say, oh, well, amadou is very expensive. Yes, it is. But if you make it yourself from, from a bracket, you will only do it once unless you love the process because it takes hours and hours and hours to process it properly. And yeah. you're not always guaranteed that you're going to get something good from it. <coughs> um, the jute tinder cord, that's again, it's a natural plant fiber. It, it ignites particularly well. Um, and looking at little little tinder kits again you've got a little fire steel with uh, an unusual shape in there um, so all, all our kits usually come with everything you would need and we always send out little free samples and things like that because we like to get people yeah playing with it so if we come down to modern stuff Modern stuff's much, much easier to use. Much easier to use. And a great way that we, we show people is to, to create a direct flame is, is with pieces of cotton wool or k park or something like that. Um, so if I use a bit of... Um, a bit. This is cotton wool. And you can use any anything really, and cotton wool's particularly good. And you fluff it out, okay? This this has been pre pre um, waxed or pre oiled, you might say. So it's it's, um, it's a bit sticky. I don't tend to do that pre do the stuff ourselves. Um, th this is kapok. The kapok's a natural plant down, so you could do dandelion heads or or um, uh, poplar you know the, the down you get from that and this stuff just just explodes into flame but you, you've got to use it with modern ferrocerium striking so you don't want to put your camera too close it'll go right up yeah so there it goes but that's a little bit too fast for um, for most kind of um, fire lighting but it looks good but it's a little bit fast so what we tend to do is um, we use a little bit of Vaseline and like I said this is all scrunched in and you don't need to do that you don't need to do it at all so a little bit of Vaseline or oil or something and literally just place it on there because what will happen is it the as the flame it will start wicking so I'll put the two side by side and you can see it should burn for about a minute or so once it's um, got some Vaseline on it. 
this bit. Okay, with modern ferrocerium, what we're after is a is a very sharp, thin edge. Okay, and it's very fragile, so it works particularly well with modern. With traditional, because it's harder steel, it will chip. It will chip the edge and damage it. Mm -hmm. So harder, much, much steeper angle stuff tends to last a bit longer with it. <clears throat> so both have caught. That's this one now is beginning to wick the the um, Vaseline through. So that'll burn about a minute. Again, this had it all scrunched in, but it's very sticky on the old fingers and you have to keep them in little plastic bags or else they just go everywhere. So you don't need to um, pre-mix the stuff. Just have a little tin with your Vaseline in it um, and, and that can fit in your tinder box. Um, particularly good for pouches. So uh, popping it in your pouch one. We do do char cloth that in a tin because as you can imagine if you put that into a pouch it's just going to turn into mush mm -hmm. um, but uh, um, Amadou of course fits in there and it won't go anywhere it's also good for packing uh, in your tinder box because it stops things rattling around because it's, it's a like nice a padding, padding yeah. to it <coughs> so what we'll do then is I'll switch this camera off. I want to quickly select my fire kit mm -hmm. and uh, I'll bring you guys back. Okay, so here we are. After much deliberation, I finally decided. And, um, just played around. I was finally allowed to kind of play around with different lengths. And um, do you want to talk me through what, 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 what I decided on? So obviously this is the um, striker that I went yeah. with. This is the striker you've chosen here. A Nor Norwegian design. Uh, again, it's a very, very traditional shape. It's a, it's a beautiful piece of flint, uh, steel, getting tired. Um, strikes wonderfully well. It's a lovely shape. And Zed here chose it because he actually liked the feel of it. So and th these are very much a, a case of you pick it up, you use it, and it, it should feel right in your hand. Uh, so that's the shape he chose. And good choice, very good choice. This is a little box of char cloth that we make and it's in, it's in a steel tin and it's got... And you were recommending that steel is the better way steel to Steel is, yeah, you've got to use steel because if you, once the char cloth has gone in, in here you'll want to be making your own. So what, what we do is it's got quite a large lip on here and what you do is you put, put two together and drill a little hole through both of them okay so what you do then when it's all empty is you put some like I said earlier some cotton or linen or so, something it's, it can't be man-made and it can't be a mixed fiber it must be natural and you put it in there you will line the two holes and pop it in the fire and all the smoke will come out of the side and it'll turn into a flame and when the flame disappears you can take it out you have to be careful because it's going to be bloody hot but you can poke a little stick in there okay mm -hmm. and that will stop the air getting back in so when it's cool you can take the stick out and when you open it you should have some really nice black char cloth in there so what you do is when you're storing it you misalign the two holes okay so the the holes will be at different parts and that way you you've never made a hole in the top of your tin which uh, doesn't look good and also it's a, a fully functioning tin Th this this char cloth um, we make it specially and it's all nicely rolled so you can just pinch off a little bit when you need it it's, okay, so it is very, really very smart I've gotten the whole idea I'm not, I've not seen someone do that before I'm a smart bloke. <laughs> You're a handsome one as well. <laughs> handsome, modest to the core. This flint is amazing bits of flint. Again, made by our, our good friend Will Lord, who's um, 
one of the country's, probably the world's foremost flint nappers. So this flint is uh, particularly splash, splashal, special. Uh, it's, it's good old English flint. flint. Um, and use. And you actually gave a bit of a tip in terms of storing it, didn't you, about covering it or just kind of emptying it out? Yeah, again, flint's incredibly sharp. Things like this have been used for millions of years for um, cutting rabbits and you know pieces like this you can certainly um, dismember a, um, a buffalo or, or a large animal like that just with pieces of flake like this very sharp um, so you have to be careful when you're, you're handling it because you will cut yourself so one of the techniques we use is, is just to empty it down onto your hand um, to take it out that way Obviously, if you think about it, you put your hand in there uh, and you can't see what you're doing. There's a very strong possibility you'll cut yourself. And then um, if, it, if it cuts, uh, can be used to cut a mammoth, it will certainly cut your skin. So there's, there's the two bits there. This pouch is a lovely little pouch. Um, and it all fits in to the pouch there. Uh, there's a bit of a story behind this pouch, no? Oh yeah, this, this lovely piece of leather. It's probably about 30 years old, this piece of leather. And uh, the guy we bought it from, he didn't, didn't really want to sell it to us, uh, but we had to, to sort of threaten his life. But uh, yeah, it's a very special piece of leather. Um, really nice and soft. It's a one-off. Uh, we're not gonna get another skin like this one. Because even if he had it, he would, certainly wouldn't have sold it to us. Um, so again, yeah, your, your flint and steel all pop into the patch again with having the the steel tim that when it starts getting knocked around on bits of flint and things if it's made of aluminium or something else it will just smash up also you find out uh, with aluminium little aluminium tins that you'll get they 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 crush too easily mm -hmm. so steel steel's going to last you a long time um, and again, if you've got char cloth, well, if you can imagine putting something as soft and brittle as that into a pouch like this, it's simply going to turn into powder. Yeah. So you've got to protect it, um, particularly in a pouch tinderbox. And um, that all fits in. Obviously, you don't want that much flint. Uh, you know, a few pieces in there would be quite sufficient. <coughs> Excellent. And last but not least, right, this is not to do with the uh, flint and steel per se. So it's one of your your your, your lovely creations, this yeah. is belt loop. Yeah, well, the, the belt loop again, um, I like simplicity, and so I designed this um, as a belt loop, and it, it there's no stitching involved, but uh, it, it all just sort of folds through it on itself and, and um, holds it its place. So you, you put this through your belt, um, and then you can use the lanyard to connect to, uh, I don't know, your favourite fire steel or something like that. Um, a pendant one, uh, you know, poking it through and then wrapping it round on itself as an example. Um, it locks it in gotcha. into place. So now it's, it's actually locked there. You can keep that in your pocket. You keep any. You keep your keys on it, so you're never going to lose your keys. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very handy. Very Excellent stuff, that. man. Well, I feel very uh, honoured today, actually, man, meeting you in person, so I. I um, going through stuff, learning a lot. You know, I hope you guys have, have picked up you know, some information along the way. Like I said, I'm very new to this, uh, so I feel quite honoured today. You know, to start off my journey using traditional, you know, flint and steel. Obviously, a lot of practice moving forward, but hopefully, moving forward, you know, just you know, try to use this a lot more than conventional you know, lighters and, 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 and fire steels and what have you not. Um, so, last but not least, well, first, I want to thank you for You're taking welcome. the time thank out. You very much. Um, and the most important thing to uh, uh, to let my guys know is they want to find out more about you the stuff that you're doing obviously the amazing stuff that you're you're kind of uh, producing and you're putting out to, to kind of people alike um, where would they go to right well whenever you see the shark logo this is our little shark logo um, you'll see it on um, anything we make our leather work will carry the shark logo on it as well um, we you can catch us on shark shark designs uh, that'll get us. We have just um, opened uh, a new sister company 
and uh, sort of a bit tongue-in-cheek but that's called beaver bushcraft and uh, we know all the jokes so uh, you don't need to tell us. I was going to crack a couple yeah, yesterday you and I, I looked at you and your partner and I was like they've heard them all before. Yeah we, we actually sat down for a couple of hours, four or five of us in the garden with loads of beers and just spent all afternoon cracking jokes about beaver bushcraft and anything else you could think of. <laughs> so in terms of the, 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 so they will go to, is it shark hyphen in the box? Is uh, it shark? Yeah, no, I mean, again, if you put in um, shark designs, as in the fish or shark yeah. tinder box, um, you, you'll often find us as top of the Google list. Uh, beaver bushcraft, I mean, you're never going to forget that as a name. That That's um, bushcraft.co uk or dot com you're never going to forget beaver bushcraft are you no <laughs> no, no, no no not at all well do you, i highly suggest you, know, you guys need to check uh, um uh, watching this video you know check you guys out see what you're doing um at the very least just you know, show your support you know you, you... what i would like to do though go ahead is i whenever you contact us you will get through to either me or helen uh, helen's my my wife what we do like to do is really really good customer service so uh, we always always answer your questions and we're always here to help you and i know on your fan page you were mentioning that you do a lot of engagement helping people out giving them advice yeah we we help the scouts out and we do shows and shows that like this we're always doing demonstrations so if you ever see us at a show please come along we'll, we'll sh happily show you anything you've seen in this uh, this little video that zed's made for us um, uh, you know, anything you want, we do knife sharpening. That that's going to be and next one in the series, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So look, he's, he's leading you on now, teasing you now. Teasing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just bring some more memory sticks because it's uh, it's quite involved. Uh, we do courses in fire lighting, leather work, knife sharpening. Excellent stuff. Well, no, your work is truly impressive. Uh, it really, really is very inspiring too. Um, so I want to thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for taking the time out to show this. Uh, and guys, like I said, you know, I appreciate you taking the time out to watch this video. Um, I know it's another long video, uh, as I always put out. Uh, but hopefully, you, know, you found it informative. You know, stuff that I'm learning along the way is practical because I'm actually buying and I've bought uh, my own kind of flint steel set. And I know a lot of you are kind of in different stages of the journey yourself. Um, so I hope it's inspired you, you know, giving you that input, you know, uh, to go out there and try this stuff yourself if you so deem fit. Until the next time. Hope wherever you're doing, you're having an awesome day. This is Ed from Z Outdoors. Take care and peace out.